Hey, what's going on everyone? Travis here, and today I'm gonna to do a quick uh, little tutorial on how to create a forum signature. And uh, I would say this isn't necessarily beginner, it's not really advanced, I'd, I'd probably say intermediate. So uh, let's not waste any time, jump right in. So we're gonna to try to create this signature right here. I just finished this up, and uh, let's try to recreate it. So what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need what's called a render, and you can get these uh, if you just Google them or go to uh, DeviantArt or uh, planet renders, uh, you can find a render of something that you want. So once you have your render and you save it, it should be a .png and transparent like so. So let's go ahead and create a new document and uh, I usually do my signature signatures about a 500 width and a height of 150 uh, pixels. So let's go ahead and click OK and uh, for the background by default it's locked, just double click and uh, hit enter and now it's unlocked. So Let's go ahead and bring our render in by just clicking and dragging it into this layer and uh, hit Control T or Edit Free Transform to, uh, to scale this down. Now if the bounding boxes are way out of range, just hit Control Zero and it'll snap uh, out so you can go ahead and adjust that as needed. So hit Enter when you like it and uh, go ahead and zoom back in. And let's position this about how uh, where we want it. So say about right about uh, right there it will work. Now what I like to do is I never like to edit any of my original layers so uh, to duplicate this layer you can right click and hit duplicate layer or you can simply hit control J and uh, what I do is I like to keep one copy of my layer that I haven't edited yet down below beneath everything just in case I need to bring it out for any reason so let's start working on uh, this one up here above our background layer and let's just get control J a couple times uh, have a lot of copies here and uh, just turn all these off with the exception of the one right down here and uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to put a gradient on our background layer so double click on that to bring up the layer styles hit gradient overlay and uh, you can do several different types some people like to do uh, reflected and uh, let's make this say let's say bluish so we'll do like a light blue and then for the outside we'll do a darker blue so it kind of looks like that and we'll put the scale up uh, about right there now uh, for this one you can do that for this one I'm gonna actually do a radial gradient put it kind of right in the middle put the scale uh, way up change the black to a light blue and the background to a dark blue like so. Now, one thing uh, you might have noticed before is sometimes you can only scale it so high. Maybe you want that to be brighter. Just uh, free transform your background. Like so. Put it about right there. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so we've got our uh, first layer here, and what we're going to do is we're going to get this smudge brush, and that's underneath blur. If you click and hold, it'll bring this fly out. Click smudge, and uh, you want uh, a smudge brush. You can download these at uh, Divine Art, or I'm sorry, De De Deviant Art, or you can create your own by just choosing one of the normal brushes, coming into the uh, the brush preset or brush properties, and uh, doing sh shape dynamics, put the scattering up, transfer, all that jazz. So let's actually scale this down and just start smudging this guy, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to smudge kind of the outside of the image here like so and then I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light looks good so let's turn on the next layer and go ahead and do the same thing but this time I'm going to do the whole image smudge dudge dudge like so and put that to soft light as well and I'm actually going to bring that one below that other layer and uh, let's just mess around with these blending modes Let's do linear dodge add for this top one. All right, so we've got that. Looks pretty good. And uh, let's go ahead and turn on another layer. And let's go ahead and go to filter, sharpen, sharpen. And what that does is it just uh, brings out more details. And uh, let's mess around with these blending modes to see what we like. Uh, I like this one right here. And uh, we'll keep that like that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just delete these extra ones that we don't need and uh, we'll create a new layer, go do image, apply image, hit OK, and uh, 
what we're going to do with this is create a new layer right below that. So now on this blank layer, let's take a splatter brush. And once again, you can download these or you can just create your own. And uh, let's just, oops. One second, brush. I think I was on the eraser. Splatter, there we go. All right, so da, 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 da. let's just create some splatters here on the outside of them. Just have some fun with it. And uh, let's go ahead and turn back on this uh, applied image above it. And if we hit control, or if we hold alt, and we click that, what that does is it creates a clipping mask. And then if we come up here to the move tool and just move it, you can see the effect it has. It's pretty cool. And about right there. And then if we hold alt and then click and drag, it's going to create a duplicate. And we can bring this one down. So now we've got two layers that are applied to this clipping mask. And let's bring this one down to right there. Okay, so let's say that's what we want. Let's go ahead and actually select the, uh, br uh, the splatter brushes down here. Select all these clipping masks and right click and hit merge layers. So now this is all one layer. And what I like to do is I like to take the eraser tool, get it pretty soft, uh, and then actually come in and erase some of these brushes from our main area that we don't really want to be in the image because we kind of want them like on the outside. And let's actually change it to overlay. Actually, let's see what some other ones look like. Yeah, I think overlay is going to look best. Actually, kind of like that better. I like how the yellow comes out. So, like I said, it's it's a lot of trial and error, just kind of messing around with the blending mode. So, all right, so we've got this now. Um, let's actually go ahead and bring out a duplicate of our uh, original layer here, and let's actually go ahead and smudge this a whole lot. And what this is going to be is kind of like our background almost, just to fill in some of these blank areas. And uh, we'll bring it down to here, and we'll put it to, let's see what looks good. Overlay looks kind of good, let's bring down the opacity just a little bit. Alright, so on the very top layer, go ahead and click on that once, and we're going to come down here to adjustments, and let's do black and white. Just close it and then bring the opacity all the way down to zero and then just bump it up just a little bit until you get kind of a good effect like so. That looks pretty good. And uh, let's go ahead and do another one for uh, curves. And what this does is down here, the lower you bring this, the darker their image is. And uh, up here, the higher you bring it, the more your lights are going to come out. So obviously, you know. These are your bright. This is your brightness. This is your darkness. So you don't want to be extreme, obviously. So just a simple S shape looks pretty good, and you can see the before and after there. Okay, looks pretty good right there. All right, so so far this is actually looking really good. Um, what do I want to do next? Let's actually bring uh, a new layer and uh, we'll hit image, apply image like we did before, hit OK. Now we've got this image and just so you guys know what apply image is, it's literally just takes all the layers that were below and creates it into one solid piece. Okay, so on that applied image, let's go to filter, other, high pass and hit OK. And uh, change the blending mode to soft light. And what this does is it kind of brings out the details that we lost during a lot of our uh, uh, adjustment. So this is before, and if we turn the layer on, you can see a lot of these nice sharp details and the darks all come back. So that's looking really good. Got a lot of depth in there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So now let's talk about um, some lighting. So right now it's got pretty good lighting, some highlights here and there, uh, but let's create a new layer and let's just give this image a little bit more, uh, a little bit more depth. So let's select a really soft brush. Uh, white and what you want to do is you want to usually try to match the light of the scene so if you look at the um, shadows on his arm for example you can see the light is kind of coming from above and the shadows down below so let's actually add a little bit of light right up here like that and that's just a plain white brush or maybe one right over here and that's a little bit too much I think just that one will be good and then let's t uh, take a black brush and add some blacks down below. 
You usually kind of want to stay in the corners. You can add a little bit in the center, but the center of this one is kind of the focal point, so we don't want to add, adjust that too much. So that's what that looks like. Just gives it some pretty nice coloring and uh, looks good. Actually, let's see. Yeah, just you leave that to a normal there. All right, so new layer once again. Take the rectangular marquee tool, and what this is for is for the uh, just for the little borders. So uh, just so you guys know, just the marquee tool on a new layer. Come across the image as small as you can, but you can adjust it. And then if you hit Shift F5, or you can hit Edit Fill, and uh, let's just fill this with black. You can fill it with other colors depending on your signature, but I typically stick to just a standard uh, black, and you don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, and you don't want these borders to be big. You want them to be extremely small, just so they don't take away from the signature. So there we go. And what I like to do is merge them, to, uh, those two, and bring the opacity down just a little bit, maybe half. That way, you kind of still have some of the details from the signature coming through, but you still have kind of a container border. All right, so now let's talk. Uh, let's talk text. Hit the text tool, and uh, a good font that comes with Photoshop is Trojan Pro. And uh, let's just type some text in here. Let's do sub zero. I'm just gonna put a space. That might not be correct, but oh well. And uh, one thing is, you don't want your text. Sorry, you don't want your text to be in a corner. You don't want it to be right in the middle. You want it to be in an area that just needs, it's kind of like the natural focal point. So without the text selected, you can kind of see that this area in the middle, there's not a lot of detail back here. It's a perfect spot. It's somewhat offset. And uh, the rule of thirds uh, is basically, if you hit the crop tool in CS6, you'll actually see the rule of thirds in effect. There we go. So the rule of thirds is a photography term, and basically you never want something in the middle, you never want it right in the direct uh, of one of these thirds, you want it kind of uh, basically offset to the rest of your your composition. So let's bring it up to about right there, and if we hold alt, click and drag, that's going to make a duplicate, or of course we can hit control J. And uh, for right now, let's just work on this one, sub-zero change the blending mode to overlay and there we go and for our subtext let's just put uh, I don't know let's put finish in and let's make this text a lot smaller than the other one and we'll offset it just a bit so we've got that and uh, there we go alright so even though these are on overlay, they're not really being affected, but if you double click and hit color overlay and change the blend mode to overlay and then select kind of a... Why aren't these being affected? One second. Capacity, black. Okay, there we go. Change them to white and it kind of looks a little better on this one. If you have a much lighter signature black on overlay will look better and what overlay does is it kind of takes whatever's behind the text and uh, brings those details through so let's actually make this a little bit bigger and I'm not going to go into detail <laughs> on this I mean it's the text can be whatever however you want but let's get like a nice lighter blue for that one and the finish hem looks good just like that so that's about it. That's your basic, uh, I think I hit pretty much everything. The only other thing I didn't really hit is if you want to add like some Cinema 4D like fractal renders and stuff into text, you can do that. Just hit open, find uh, Photoshop stuff. Where is my Photoshop shoes? Renders and you can get these once again from, you know, Deviant Art, and usually they're a PNG, but of course this one isn't. So let's just select the color range of black, hit delete, and now we've got it. Bam. And bring it into our signature. Scroll it down, or scale it down. And maybe we want it like right over his shoulder there. Change it to soft light, and uh, Control Shift U will desaturate that. And uh, you guys get the point. Just mess around with the blending modes. Um, 
this just doesn't look good on the signature. There's already so much detail in it. But uh, I think that's about it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, uh, just leave comments below. And I'm just going to take this brush tool and put some lighting right in the middle. Change it to overlay. And that kind of brightens up that stab. But thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.